So echoes and reverberation, um, to pick up a point from uh, how sound moves. Um, as that sound disperses, it will smack against the walls and basically play billiards um, in, in the way that it moves. Um, and it creates kind of like a pool of sound. And that's what we perceive as reverb. And because it, the, the geometry of every single room is different, and because the direction of sound as I move my voice, you know, uh, kind of uh, keeps uh, changing uh, the, the way that uh, that sound is moving. Um, sound is not constant. You know, sometimes you can't have a microphone in one place. Sometimes you have to have a microphone moving around, like a boom, because you want to pick up the most direct sound possible. If I am here, and I'm walking around, I'm talking, and I need that boom operator to be right above me, and to keep a constant distance between me and between my, my oration, which is right here, it's this bubble right here. A lot of people think that it's point the microphone at the mouth, but you're gonna pick up a lot of sibilance and plosives that way that you don't need to. It's really this little beach ball coming out of my mouth right here that we're trying to aim for. So if that stays constant, then I'm gonna sound pretty good no matter what I do. The lavalier, right now it's the center of my chest, but if I talk to the left or I talk to the right, guess what I'm hearing? I'm hearing a lot more reverb coming back into the microphone because I don't have uh, as much direct sound going into the microphone as there is indirect sound. So the reverberation is basically the signature of the room shouting back at you. Um, depending on the acoustic properties of the room, meaning uh, the materials, um, uh, the density of uh, things in the room, um, you're going to have more or less reverberation. Uh, some people think it's echo. Echo is not quite the same thing because echo is, uh, is a delay. Echo is hearing the same thing coming back at you, whereas reverb is very dispersed. It's a reverb is Again, like I said, it's like the water in the pool that's, that's kind of swimming around you. Um, so, signal to noise ratio is something that uh, we have to pay a lot of attention to. Um, basically, noise is anything that is not the program. The program would be my voice right now in this documentary type setting. Now, the program in a, um, in a narrative setting might actually be the natural sound. It might actually be the sound of a guy running up the stairs. But um, in, in, you know, this kind of, it, it just depends on the setting. It depends on what you're doing, you know. Generally, um, as a sound recordist, I'm always going to prioritize the voice if someone's speaking. Um, but things that, things that are not diegetic, things that aren't supposed to be there, that's all noise. Uh, if, if you're doing, a, again, you know, a, a feature or something like that, there might be generators around. Um, those are going to produce a lot of sound, and none of it's actually supposed to appear in the movie, so we call that noise. Um, there might actually be uh, traffic in, uh, in, in a news setting. Um, that's noise. However, it's a diegetic noise, so we don't have to worry about cleaning it off as much as we would in a narrative setting, where we want to create the world. If we're able to accept the world as it is, then our job gets much, much easier. All we have to worry about is signal-to-noise ratio. We don't have to worry about masking the noise out. Um, now, ways that we can take care of this is, you notice down here, We've got some uh, some blankets on the floor here. We've just got a concrete, which is just concrete walls here. So to minimize the, the vibration in the room, we put down these these things. Uh, these are actually called uh, ferny pads, um, and they're for furniture moving. That's what they're originally designed for. But um, 
they become a major tool in, uh, in uh, the sound uh, recorder's arsenal uh, because they're easy to just throw down and kind of block some of that, uh, block some of that reverberation. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Other types of noise uh, would be mechanical noise. Um, sometimes you get uh, camera sounds, camera fans, um, light ballasts, um, HVAC. One of the first things that I do when I walk into any room that I'm going to be recording is I look at uh, I look for the the ventilation systems and I listen for it and I and I look for the controls. I talk to um, the uh, property owner or the homeowner and find out if there's any way that we can shut that down during the during the production. Um, and also appliances, refrigerators, coffee makers. Uh, microwaves. You definitely don't want to have anyone that's uh, near the production that's you know preparing food or doing anything like that. Um, cell phones, uh, airplanes, again traffic. Um, basically, the number one thing that uh, that has to happen when you walk into a recording situation is deciding what's noise, what's program, what's part of the story, what's not part of the story, and then working with it. 